As a professional video editor, you might suspect that the number one way I pay my bills is through video editing. But funny enough, that couldn't be further from the truth. The actual number one way I pay my bills is through selling digital products for Final Cut Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of building a digital product using Apple Motion, publishing that product over to Final Cut Pro, and finally using Payhip to sell that product online so that you can keep paying your bills when the video editing dries up. Of course, the very first part of this process is building the digital product. And like I said, we're gonna use Apple Motion for that. So once you've opened Apple Motion, it should give you the project browser. For this product, I wanted to recreate this glowing title that I recently featured in a video that people seem to absolutely love. So to do that, we're gonna select the final cut title. Then over here on the right side, I recommend working in a 4K timeline as that makes it better for selling online. You just know that the resolution is gonna be all there for everybody and their needs. In the bottom right corner, we can push open and we are off to the races. The first thing we're gonna need to do is get rid of the title background and type text here layers. From there, we can go ahead and add in a title. So I'm gonna get my title tool and click anywhere in my viewer. I typically like to just write out the words of whatever my product is going to be. So we could just call it the super glow title. Then after that, we'll go over to our inspector on the left side and increase the scale of our title. And we can also go ahead and set the alignment to be centered. Then we'll go to our properties and locate the position. Right click on that and then select reset parameter. So now our title should be directly in the middle. So we have our title. It's time to start adding these cool gradient colors. First, let's rename the group that contains our title as the title group, just for clarity's sake. Then over here on the left side, we can go to our library, generators, and we're gonna locate the clouds generator. I'm gonna click and drag that above the title group so that we create a whole new group here in our layer browser. Let's rename this group to be the gradient colors. Then select your clouds generator. Right now, there's a lot of definition with these clouds, which is gonna make this effect look weird. I want there to be a nice, soft fall off. So to achieve that, we'll go over to the left side in our inspector. You'll see the horizontal and vertical scale. Go ahead and click directly on the numbers and just drag those all the way up to 256, which is their maximum. Now it's looking a lot better, but I want to add an extra level of softness to these clouds. So to do that, we'll go up to our filters, we'll go to blur, and we're going to select Gaussian blur. Now I found that a level of 500 was really good for this particular effect. So I'll just type in 500. And you'll notice that that's kind of vignetting on the edges. So to fix that, we'll just select this crop effect and that will totally solve that problem. So now we have this black and white blob effect, but we want them to have a bunch of colors. Now you might suspect inside of our clouds that we would use the gradient effect that's built in here, but we're actually going to use a filter to pull this off as it's gonna give us a lot more control that we can send over to Final Cut Pro. So to do that, we'll select our clouds, we'll go up to filters, we'll go down to color, and we're going to select the gradient colorize effect. Right now, it just looks like we've added some contrast to the clouds. Because our gradient is currently black and white, it's not really going to show up here. But if we change this gradient over to say something like rainbows, you'll notice that the darker the image gets, the more of a certain color it receives from this spectrum here. And the reason we use the gradient colorize effect is we can use stuff like this offset to totally change up the effect. So you can see I can increase that offset amount and really change up the look. We can add in more repeats. And again, this is just giving us full control over how this particular effect plays out. So I love using the gradient colorize effect when I have the opportunity to do so. Now I'm not crazy with the rainbow look. I want it to match more of my own personal branding. So to do that, I'm gonna just select these presets and I've created a preset with my own personal branded colors, which is this blue, purple, pink, orange look. And we can expand that out and you'll see that we have these three colors and we can adjust them according to our taste. We could even change them up if we wanted to. But obviously if somebody's buying this preset online, they don't wanna only have access to my own personal branded colors. They wanna change these colors for themselves. So we need to publish this particular parameter. If you come over here to the left side, I'll collapse the gradient. We can right click on that gradient and select publish. And now when we send this to Final Cut Pro, we'll have full control 
over all the gradient colors. We could also publish stuff like this offset. So I'll publish that, maybe the repeats. We could even do the repeat method. This is just gonna give our users full control over how everything looks. So this is looking super good, but right now we just have a bunch of blobs and they aren't really cutting out our text. So we need to add an image mask. Go ahead and select the clouds layer inside of the gradient colors group. It has to be the clouds, not the gradient colors group. With the cloud selected, right click and select add image mask. And now we can tell motion how to cut out these clouds. So we'll just drag in our title to this drop well for the mask source. And now Motion knows to cut out those clouds wherever that title is sitting. Now this is looking really cool already, but it doesn't have that cool neon glow effect that people love. So let's go ahead and add that. Making sure you select the gradient colors group, not the clouds layer, we can go up to filters, go down to glow and select neon. The reason we had to select the gradient colors group and not the clouds is because if we applied neon to these clouds effect, the effect would be cut off by the image mask, thus completely negating any glow effect. So I'm gonna undo that. And now selecting our neon effect, we can go over to the filters category. We'll adjust these different settings. I like to set the outer brightness down to a value of one and then set the outer glow to something like 700. And that's just gonna give us a really nice fall off. We can adjust the inner glow to a value of our liking somewhere in there, maybe 250 is a good point. And you can just see how all of these colors are blending together really nicely. Finally, there's this edge intensity, which you can adjust to your liking. And that's all looking really good to me at 10. So this looks awesome. And we could even give our users full control over all these parameters by right clicking on them and selecting publish as we go through. Finally, I want to animate these titles coming in. So let's select our title. We'll go up to behaviors. We'll go down to text animation and select sequence text. Now going over to the left side, we can add in a parameter. So we want these to slowly fade into place. We're of course going to need to adjust the opacity to pull that off. So we'll go to format and select opacity. Right now it's at 100%. We want it to start from 0%. So let's just drag that value all the way down. And if we move our playhead throughout, you can start to see how the title is animating in. But as it is, it's really, really slow. So we need to speed this up. To do that, we'll select the sequence text layer and we can just move forward about two seconds. I'm gonna push O, which is going to set the out point. So now we've sped up the animation by quite a bit. But as it is, it's animating in individual letters and I want it to have a nice spread to it. So to do that, we'll find the spread slider and just drag that up to a place where we're happy. Somewhere in there looks good to me. And we could even change the speed from constant over to ease both. So let's push play and see how that gives us this really nice effect. Now we don't want it to just animate in, but we also want it to animate out. So let's just rename the sequence text to be sequence intro. Then I'm gonna push Command D to duplicate it, and we'll just rename that to be Sequence Outro. Now that we've created the outro, let's click and drag that in our timeline to the very end of the project to the last two seconds. But you'll notice a problem. If I move my playhead to the start of that, all of our title will disappear. That's because we're currently animating in our sequencing from 0% and we need to animate two. So let's just change that over to two and now it will slowly fade out just like so. This is looking really great. It's finally time to publish this over to Final Cut Pro. And because we chose a Final Cut title at the very beginning of this video, we can just push Command S to save and we can call it Super Glow Title. We can also add a category. I recommend creating a specific category for your own plugins. That way it makes it really easy to identify them inside of Final Cut Pro. But I actually want these particular titles to be alongside another category that's already in Final Cut Pro by default, and those are called dynamic titles. So let's just go down to new category, and I'm just gonna type in dynamic titles. From there, we can push create. Now, because I'm creating this inside of a category that's already in Final Cut Pro by default, I'm gonna also add in my own theme. So I created these titles, so I would just wanna throw them into my Final Cut Pro theme, that way it's easy to identify who made them. From there, we can push publish. 
And what's great is now all of this is over inside of Final Cut Pro. So in Final Cut Pro, if we go to our titles and locate dynamic titles, and because I put them in the Final Cut Pro theme, they'll be here at the bottom and you'll see how they're just super nicely animated. So I can bring that in just like any other title. We could rename it, we could scale it. So your users are going to have access to all of these various controls directly inside of Final Cut Pro, which is so incredible. And now that we have it in Final Cut Pro, we can finally get it onto PayHip so that we can keep paying our bills even when the video editing dries up. So to do that, we'll go over here to the Final Cut Pro category, right click on our title and select Reveal in Finder. It should look something like this. It has a large .png, a small .png. And if we scroll to the left side, you'll see the root folder called Dynamic Titles, which we created just a little bit ago. To sell this, we're going to want to compress it first. Right click on it and select compress. And now it's just a simple zip file, which we can upload super easily. And finally, we can jump over to PayHip. To add a new product is super, super simple. So we'll just go up and press add new. And this is where the benefits for PayHip start. You can see that not only can I create a digital product, but I could also sell a course, a membership, physical product, coaching service, and even a bundle. So. It's really, really flexible to sell whatever you could possibly need. I'm just going to select digital product. And now all we need to do is upload that product file that we created. So I'll just press upload and I'll go to my desktop. And here is dynamic titles and we can press upload. After that, we can just name our product. So I'm just going to call this the super glow title. Now, I actually really like how $5 looks for this particular product, but what's really cool is we can also just add in a plus sign. So maybe somebody wants to pay more for the product than when it's actually valued on your store, just as a simple thank you, maybe offering as a little bit of a tip. So by adding in a plus next to that, it offers pay what you want pricing. After that, we can upload a product image and I've gone ahead and already created one for this particular product. So I'll just upload that. Then scrolling further down, we can offer a description. So for this description, you could populate it with something like chat GPT if you wanted to, or you could just write out a super simple one. And we can even add in images of our product. That way people know exactly what they're purchasing at the time. I've gone ahead and exported out a GIF image, which I will upload here, and we'll just press upload. And so once that's uploaded, people can easily see exactly how the animations will play out for this particular title, which is so handy. I also super strongly recommend that you upload some sort of video explaining how to install Final Cut Pro plugins. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to link some videos down below for my friend Brad West, who does a great job explaining how to do so. Scrolling further down, we can choose if it's a visible product so everyone can see it and it's publicly available invisible so if maybe it's more of a draft and you want to come back and edit it later or if it's unlisted so people can only find this product if you send them a direct link to it which can be kind of a fun marketing method if you maybe have a marketing email list and you want to just send that product out to only those people you can even add it into a collection so i have my best sellers collection and free final cut pro plugins collection that i've created but once you are done with your product you can just select add product and now, just like that, this product is available over on my store. So we can go ahead and check out the show me the product page. And here it is, my super glow title. We've got the little animation taking place. It tells me how big of a zip file is. And you'll see here at the bottom that people can use Amex or PayPal or Visa, MasterCard, whatever they could possibly need to purchase this product. And if we go ahead and go to my home, we can see all of my products and I'll press view all. And scrolling down, there is my super glow title now available on my store. So you might be asking yourself, why am I using PayHip personally? And no, it's not because they're sponsoring this video. The reason I'm using PayHip is originally I was using a competitor. In fact, I was a top 200 seller on that competitor's store. But that particular competitor continued to increase their prices, which hurt me as a business. They continued to make anti-consumer choices. And overall, it just ended up being a terrible experience and I couldn't get away from it fast enough. So I was so excited when I discovered PayHip. They have an amazing pricing model. They have amazing customer support and their entire website is so modern and easy to use. 
I was just over the moon when I discovered it. Not only does Payhip allow me to sell my digital products, but once I go to sell physical products, I can do that. I can offer coaching, which I'm going to be offering here really soon. Not to mention Payhip handles all of the VAT stuff and Payhip very, very soon is going to become a global merchant of record, which means that all of your tax problems are going to be figured out with this platform and it's just going to be so amazing for creators and this was actually one of the number one features i was looking for in a digital online store you can create your own blog on your store and you can even set up an affiliate program which i have done also if you already have your own website but you're interested in selling digital products you can literally just embed payhip into your website so you don't have to worry about sending people to a whole new web address or anything like that payhip also just implemented this awesome marketplace feature which means that your products will be featured alongside other amazing creators giving your products even more visibility. So if you're interested in selling your digital products online, which I highly recommend, make sure you check out Payhub using the links down below. It does tremendously help out the channel if you use those links as they are affiliate links. If you enjoyed working inside of Apple Motion in this video, then I'm gonna strongly suggest you also check out this video here where I show you how to create this really cool looking retro gradient title.